Hello world, Kathy Vick, Deeply Awake. I'm sharing a video by Steve Judd that I really enjoyed watching. It's about the positive aspects of, of Pluto. I was going to post the neutral and then the negative aspects as well, but um, I'll let you discover those on your own. In my life, I chose to use Pluto in a very, um, hopefully, a very positive way. <laughs> um, I was put on the straight and narrow early, and it's because I had Uranus so strong in my chart, and man, oh man, I, it was, if I wasn't really clear about what I was doing and why I was doing it, things went haywire. I mean, I learned that early. I have a code of conduct, I have rules. And I know when I break the rules, I'm doing it at my own risk because things can go haywire. <laughs> my dad confirmed I was a shit magnet. Weird stuff just happened to me and I was challenged a lot. So mine was to um, watch it unfold. It was in my first house, it was my ascendant and my north node. Pluto retrograde. And staring right right at it was the Sun, Chiron, and Mercury retrograde in combustible. Combust. That was my reality. And then add to that a yod. With Uranus beaming energy from the twelfth house down into Saturn and down into Jupiter in this great conjunction. With with the moon doing a lot of stuff but in the 10th house, but I'll tell you what, I did some further research and I learned about intercepted houses, which I have. And how if you have intercepted houses, just check your house chart on a Placidus um, system. And if you have two signs in you have doubled the signs, like Pisces is in the first and second house. Well then, you have an intercepted sign. And that was my case. So I have no Gemini, and I have no Sagittarius. And that's your communication. And um, what it speaks very, very much of the lifetime, I, or the karma, I came to clear. That was uh, my great-grandma who was imprisoned by great-grandpa because she had a stroke that made her mute. And um, and just, you know, it, it is, it's, a, it's archetypal. Females mute and males doing what, doing power shit, doing plutonic shit. <laughs> well, the tables are turning. And so um, it's been a really great journey and I wanted to kind of celebrate 2017 with you. For me it's been all been all about the eclipses because the ones in February tickled me and a generation dudes. It ain't just me because the first set in February were all about Virgo and Pisces dudes and Pluto was in Virgo and <laughs> my Pluto was sitting right in the middle of Virgo when I was born, so there you go. But yeah, and that was my ascendant, okay? So, there you go. A lot of us were tickled, but every single generation is tickled by Pluto in its own way. So when things fall apart, they fall apart hard. You say, oh, things can't get worse, and they get worse. That's Pluto. <laughs> and if you've got it really bad in your chart, well, there you go. Here's some help because there's a reason for it. Uh, oh, I learned the most beautiful thing. <sighs> yeah, sure, your your natal chart is your soul selfie. But this one fellow says that your natal chart is simply your soul's intention of what you intended to become, what you intended to do. And I thought, wow, that changes everything. That's beautiful. I like it. So, um, I did one other thing that's freaky deaky. Uh, I'd checked it before, but I didn't ever see the patterns. 
but I, I just was really interested about my prenatal eclipse. I really want to know about that. And so quite a long time ago, I went digging, and it was weird, but that's all I thought. <laughs> yeah. I looked at it again. There's a big honking yawn. Jeez. Involving the planets that are involved in mine. And it's like the stellium. I forget which planet. But all of that energy, and it's a, it is a ton of energy, is pointing directly into that yod point of Uranus. Ha! And here I am saying that that yod of mine seems to be fed by Uranus in the 12th house. This is being fed by the 12th house. You better believe it was. <laughs> you want the evidence? There's the evidence. What is what more is there to say? You know? <laughs> There's nothing more to say. Those who will who's, who can understand will. So, um I led a sainted life. I led a cursed life. I led a blessed life. I was protected. Of course I was protected. And so for me, this year has been about um, uh, wanting to shed that. Feeling that power. And I reached a point. I reached a point that was, that was really hard. Because I realized I just, I just, I just couldn't go on. I was too disappointed, I was too sad, I was too alone, I was too abandoned, I was too neglected. I was too unheard. I couldn't do it anymore. Don't make me. And it was like lead, you know? And funny, you know, it was in the middle of a year that I have never been so loved. I've, n I've been so supported and so adored. I really have. It's just been awesome. I, I don't... I don't wonder if people love me. I know they do. They show me they do. And I can feel it, finally. <laughs> I'd complain about being in a, in a soundproof booth. I couldn't feel anything. It, <sighs> it, was, it was hard. I could feel love. It just, I, I, once in a while I could feel it. I never believed it when I felt it, though. Because I knew I'd be punished. They'd punish me for having given it to me. They always did. It was just a really bad scene, man. You don't know what I've been through. <laughs> I do. <laughs> but it got to the point where I just I couldn't do it anymore. I'd loved so hard. And I had been hurt so bad. Not just once, but just... No, no more. And then things shifted. That was that was before the eclipses. And and then and I was loved, I was happy, but it just was like it was too much. My body crapping out and the anxiety that provoked and having no money and having no job and having it was just really scary. And, and feeling so awful at the same time. Carrying those memories. Doing that shadow work. When does it stop? And yet I seem to have forgotten that I'd already said, hey, no more with that stuff. But walking into that eclipse in, 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 in August, wow. Wowie zowie. Things lightened up after that. 
and I really feel like I, I can uh, the mantle is mine it's part of me now and it's all lit up I found out that the Arcturians um, have a, they have things called mantles that give them powers <laughs> that was kind of cute because I think Andromeda I mean my, pla my place Antares comes from Arcturi Arc wherever it is Arcturus I don't know. I don't know all that shit. <laughs> I asked. I asked um, my Sammy after uh, over dinner, where what planet he's from. So I don't have the name. But I mean, he's. <laughs> oh man. It's great to have someone around who's um, more advanced in that way than me. Um, and yet I know he hides some of the stuff he doesn't know, and there's no reason to. But um. He just has a otherworldly quality, shall we say. So I've been supported. I felt so loved. And yet I, I really did go to a place of I just don't know if I can do I can't. Something has got to change. And I did that again and again and again energetically. And it was over the, the, over the summer. So I think maybe I was getting ready. But what I've noticed is that I um, I had this beautiful meditation this morning as I was waking up. That natal charts, what is there to improve on? What are, what's all this about self improvement? I mean, you set it up that you would get pissed off easily, or you'd be a jealous person, or I mean, you set it up that way. So how about just figuring that out? And then figuring out a different way using your skills, using your positives. And you can do that with astrology, you can do it with self-help books, you can do it with talking to your friends or journaling or whatever. But it helps to have a reflection, it helps to have um, something to to um, inspire you to think differently. Because it really is about thought patterns and, and uh, thought grooves and jumping the needle, as I've said. So, um... For me, 2017 has been about transformation, complete and utter, leaving one lifetime and beginning another while incarnate and doing it consciously, deliberately, kind of scientifically, and publicly. That's been my work. How you like it so far? I'm pretty impressed myself. Sometimes, but I'll tell you, a wave hit me around like 3 o'clock this afternoon. I was feeling really good. Oh my gosh, I'm just kind of, there's no reason to be upset. Blah, 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 blah. And then, wow, just like, oh, but a sweet kind of soft sadness and melancholia. And yesterday I cried four times to my core for my lost love. Oh my god. Oh. In other days, you, you just can't stop the optimism. And today, oh, this sweet, soft. By the time I got home, I was just like, felt really icky. So the only thing that I wanted to do was take a bath with Epsom salts and like really happy smells so I put in a lot of tangerine and stuff ah, it smells so good and it was in the tub that these unacknowledged and unknown feelings of just just sweet soft melancholia and when I'm feeling that it felt like a wave as I was driving home the cloud had this really cool ridge just how I was feeling inside and I knew to just feel it and be okay with it, to know it's going to pass and to honor it because it wants to be held and it wants to be released. And look at this. Here I am driving home to an empty house and I can tend to it. Isn't that beautiful? So I did. I took a bath and it felt better. And as I, as I was bathing and cleaning and thinking and praying, I realized that, you know, I'm not, 
I'm not any of those things. I'm a good, I'm such a sweet, sweet, sweet person. Yes, I, I have a hard time communicating. I say things that are very hurtful and I don't think they're hurtful. I have no idea and I think I'm being helpful and I'm being really, really harmful. And you know what? I do my best. I'm always trying to help. I know my intention is clean. I know it's clean. So I do that a lot. And I don't mean to. But I have friends and they love me. They love me just as I am. Not just one. A lot. And I respect them. I really do. Each and every one of them. I think they're magnificent people. And I'm honored to be in their lives. And I know they feel the same way about me. And they help me when I need help. And I help them as I can. I don't help as I should. I, I could do more. But I'm learning how to be more, more giving. But it sure has felt good to receive. It's made it okay to be here. It's made it safe. And so through this year, I really do think that I have been able to live in honor of what I created. I didn't go the dark side and I had every opportunity. I was built to live in the dark side. I was built to abuse power. And look at how I use my Pluto. How did you use yours? Is it tickling you? Like it tickled me? I said no to a way of life. But I said yes to life. And I continue to. So, um, it's a very beautiful time to be alive because the energy is very beautiful to work with. In the tub, what came to pass is my really, really owning my goodness, my sweetness, my intention of goodness, and of um, while honoring the person, purging, 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 remove it, remove it, remove it. This is not mine. This darkness is not mine. This darkness never was mine. Remove it, remove it, remove it. There's only about three times in my life I've been at that point, and it is a fever pitch point. It's quiet, but it's intense, because I realize something has been riding along with me that isn't mine, has been feeding off of me, and I have, in some weird way, been willing to assist. These are called miasms, synergy work. And um, I felt like a million bucks when I got out of the bathtub, I'll tell you that. And now I'm here. And I'm taking this seriously. It's real. Um, and I'm okay with being a human specimen. That was the idea. So, um, it was done in amnesia, certainly. <laughs> So, um, I was talking to my kid because I was kind of like feeling weird about my novel because, I mean, okay, I was going to do this really cool thing and I had it all set up and I had a, I had a storyline and everything, characters and all this, but I told him the thing is that um, I'm writing about this master, right? With all these cool friends and adventures. Well, um, I did these five years of like miracle stuff. And I had all these visitations and visions and miracles and stuff. And, um, yeah, it's been five years, but I, I was thinking maybe I could just shrink it all down, you know, go and catalog it and highlight it and put it all together in one little thin volume and sell the shit out of that. What do you think? <laughs> Sam said, well, duh. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. So you're going to see Deeply Awake, my website, Kathy Vick, 
flooded with um, information from lightworkers.org. I'm transferring every ding dang thing, including my little my first starts of, hey, is anybody else feeling like their chest is on fire? <laughs> Stuff like that, um, because it's you know relevant. And uh, bit by bit, I'm going to uh, populate my website with my old stuff. And uh, as I, I don't think I'm going to do it as I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and do the mechanical stuff. And then I need to weed through each and every piece, put dates on uh, events, you know, really distill the events and make it readable. And then boom, 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 boom. And it's done. So um, in the meantime, though, I get my biggest things in the morning time. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, the, the information is just... I don't have socks on because they've been blown off, all right? Today I saw natal charts as, as these, I don't know, like coins. Why would you want to improve it? Why not just be at peace with it because it was your intention? If you're not at peace with how you express, then you've got a problem, dear one, because you, you dialed it in to express and experience this way. And I became more and more uncomfortable with that reality until I got to the point where I really I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> and maybe the other things were dry runs, but I really did a, like a final purge, and then boom, there was the eclipse. Um, and uh, I still have negative thinking and things that, you know, I really, it they, they doesn't lead anywhere but unhappiness when I go down certain roads. <laughs> and I guess I haven't yet put up the signs that say the road's closed. But um, for the most part, I just see no reason to, to be anything but pretty satisfied. Um, and I want to close by talking about the, the big event, all right, because in our community, in this new age community, there's talk of the event. The event. Well, basically it's what, was it Matthew who talked about how there'd be a trumpet sound and maybe every, maybe not everyone's asleep. Maybe there'll be some who are awake. But <laughs> once that sounds, whoo, you'll be awake. And I was very, I hadn't really given it much thought what they were, they talk about until I heard my uh, last channeled message at the very, very end with their sneaky little devils. They do this when, a, when I've got a long one, always go to the end. <laughs> That's where the juicy stuff is. And they said, be wary of what you see in the sky. Um, use your wonder. Use your discernment. Um... Even if it sh you know if it shocks you, and they went giggle giggle with the shocks, and um, so I just and I think and I've seen I've had the visions I've had have always been on the ground what the ground people are doing. I've been seeing that. I hadn't take taken into account you know the celestial bodies, and that's okay. But I just it's hard to get involved in politics because I know something's coming. And here's the deal. If it comes in the first quarter of 2018, which is what a lot of QHHT uh, hypnosis people are saying, their SC is saying this, and there's a lot of them, so, you know, that bears some, some thought that it really, really is upon us. I think we all feel something pretty immediate. But if it doesn't happen until after I'm dead and gone, I don't care. It's worth waiting for. And in the meantime, I'm here to stay in as high a vibration as I can and to spread that. I'm no longer the destroyer. I no longer have to break things. That's not my job anymore. Neither is it to heal the broken. Using myself as the tool. That's over too. My geometry now is the Star of David. And during the last eclipse I saw it. Like on the ground, on a patch of grass, big patch of grass, there's a lit up Star of David in the middle of it there was a shrouded figure. And I understood that, you know, 
there's something that's over and done here. As you wish. What do you want? You can have it. And so I'm getting used to new geometries. In my old geometry, I found out that um, my Gemini and Sag, did I mention this, was, were intercepted, so hard to communicate. Now I have a lifetime of those habits and of um, thinking things through like seven levels so I can feel safe in an environment, not knowing how to respond, being basically freaking autistic or Asperger's in a world that didn't know. And I don't have that anymore. Whee! <laughs> So I get to just relax a little bit, but I want to honor what I went through. So I, the prenatal eclipse blew my mind. I went to other eclipses, nah, not so much. I mean, they tickle. Boy, do they tickle. But wow. Case closed, dear ones. <laughs> so I might do morning doodads, because that's when it's like really super strong, and I get really great stuff. Um, but I, I really want to concentrate on, on making something that um, will help a lot of people, I think. I hope. I hope. That's the idea. And in the book I can be a little bit more honest about um, some of the things that um, were going on before I um, transformed. For the last time, I've gone through a lot of transformations in my life. I've lived many lives, and one, it's always felt, but this is the real deal with changing geometries, and um, and uh, it feels really good. It's very balanced. There are some challenges, because um, these are not, these are grand trines that have oppositions. I have three oppositions, and none of them are easy. But it's like, oh well, so what? <laughs> so I get to learn how to hold my tongue and temper and not speak. Okay, I guess I'll have to learn that finally. I'm no longer the destroyer. And I'm no longer the one that, that just gets used. It's cooperative now. And everybody benefits now. From here on out, everyone benefits always. That's one of the rules. So I had a lot of rules to get through my life, a lot of rules. And if I strayed off the path, I got I, I got knocked over in my old in my old geometry. And it was Uranus, I think. <laughs> that just would shock me back to what I was doing. So that's that's really oh, that was really ooh, that kind of blew my mind. Alright, when I got out of the bathtub I had this no more, no more thing, which was really great, and it broke the energy, and I was no longer in that melancholia. I was like vibra vibrantly alive, and I was getting out of the tub, and I had a really pretty thought. For my whole life, um, I had a feeling like I, I, I just there wasn't time to play. I don't have time to waste. I don't have time to waste. And that was something that was um, that led to breakups, actually. Because um, if I wasn't working on issues, working on myself, learning, 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 it was it was very intense. And if it if it doesn't, I needed to be on time. I couldn't. I just I couldn't waste time. Everything was fodder. But I had to figure this out. And um, as I was getting out of the tub, I realized I don't have to rush anymore. It's not necessary anymore. I did it. I can relax. Um, I hope I can serve as an example of, of a of a sinner and a saint, as um, someone who was um, an idiot savant, and now I I just want to be known as um, 
I don't know. Deeply awake. So, um, I know it's an unusual 2017, but I'll bet you, <laughs> I'll bet you, you had some weirdness too. See if comrade. We're here to ascend. We're here to, to clarify. We're here to get ready. You gotta get ready. When this thing hits, it, you need to be ready. It's a physical event. It's a physical event. I've been training for it my whole life. And I hope that I can get this published before it happens. But if I can't, I want you to know. That you're safe. You're here on purpose. Even though you might be going through shocks and bumps. They're designed by you. There's no one doing anything to you. If they are, then you've got something to figure out, don't ya? It has to do with worth. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with power gradients, actually. And it has to do with mind fuckery. It has to do with the lower agreement field. There are different agreement fields. Different realities. Different dimensions. And I think it's the dissonance of considering agreement fields that are not compatible that is led to pain and has to stop for me. I, I want resonance, not dissonance, now. So I'm going to go cuddle up in bed. My son's away at a uh, at, uh, lock-in lock at the Rainbow Alley. <laughs> so all the queer kids are having fun tonight <laughs> in Denver, <laughs> eating voodoo donuts and acting weird. And, um, and so I'm going to enjoy my new shows and go night night and I just want to say thank you because I don't think that there's going to be any more of the hey this is the story morning glory kind of things but I, it, it had to be said out loud partly just for me and how real this is how butterfly-ish this is with or without an event well there comes a time when you just say yeah well I guess I, I guess my wings are dry now <laughs> I've seen my wings. They're pretty awesome. They're pretty badass, actually, because they're not entirely white. <laughs> really pretty, though. Anyway, maybe I'm maybe I'm ready to take my flight. I think so. And uh, you know what? I can't really cry because there's caterpillars. They'll get their turn too. We're all changing pretty much all the, all at once, guys. So hang in there, everybody. With or without a big event, find a way to express and make whatever comes out of your pen or your brush or your voice real. Not beautiful, real. Try that. Get it out. It's a good time to do shadow work. Makes you feel like a million bucks. All right. Well, that's that's all I have to say. That's that was a real deal thing. I feel really good about it because I wasn't at all apologetic. I didn't feel weird about it. It was like let's get this job done. <laughs> so, mission accomplished. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of take a break. Transfer all that stuff, do that work, and you may see me in little, little teeny tiny morning things, little itty bitty ones. Maybe. Maybe I'll make some kind of New Year's resolution. Who knows? The ones I stick to change my life. 
the best one. I had to use my blinkers for a whole year. It was a good New Year's resolution. Um, Alright. I think that's all I have to say. I'm pretty... feeling pretty good about it. I hope you are too. I hope you had fun. I hope it made you laugh and think and hopefully not cry. And um, that you feel ready for a new year. Alright. Namaste.